Good morning, and Privateer FX. Coming at you Friday, 8th of February. End of the first full week of Feb. We got Canadian uh, employment numbers today. The whisper is this shit's going to be weaker. We'll have to see about that. Oil's been plunging. So, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, let's talk about uh, equities. Uh, S&P futures, they dropped 28 points. Yesterday, they closed 2703. We're down at 2692 today. Uh, we're still up 3% or so on the year, um, if you consider the fact that we opened it around 2508. Close to 4%, I guess. 3.5%, we'll call it. Um, a lot of people are saying the reasons for this dip are U.S.-China trade anxieties. Uh, we talked about it on Twitter that we were looking for this one uh, event. I have to say that the U.S.-China trade bullshit is not um, the type of event that we're looking for. We're looking for more of a surprise negative event. Um, so... We are flat ES now. We took profit on that trade. And even though the bias is left, uh, we're open-minded here. When you get 30 or 40 handles in the money and you're trading a tactical book, the risk-reward gets quite upside down, right? I mean, we're bearish this stuff all the way up to 27.50. The long-term book doesn't have a position uh, in ES. It's just a tactical book. So we're square. We took the money off the table. We will reassess today. Um, but, you know, the, the catalyst yesterday looked like comments from Kudlow. But anything Trump-related, anything... Uh, we don't take as serious, we can't rely on, it's too flimsy. So that wasn't the nail in the coffin piece of news we were looking for. We still look relatively risk off today. Boone's uh, 166.44, they're yielding, I don't know, 11 basis points. Uh, we had to kill our uh, long-term boon trade uh, as we got through 15 basis points. Things look bad in Europe, uh, and I guess they actually look worse. I thought bad was priced in, and I think bad is priced in, and I think it's just worse than bad now. So that said, let's take a look at this Euro chart. One, two, three, four red days in a row. I just get the feeling this uh, 112.90 is going to come into play today. Um, so this is a focus for us. Selling high ones in Euro Yen is the uh, trade du jour. We talked about it yesterday. We got up to sort of 73. We've been down to, uh, let's see, yesterday's low was, yeah, it was 35. We traded back up to 73. If you look on the hourlies here, so we made these lows back up to 73. We're fucking around 50, 73. Now we printed that 30 low, which is exactly this daily trend line here. Um, this is this is going to be traded as a momentum line for us today, um, with some tight risk parameters. Selling high ones in um, euro yen seems to be one of the one of the more payable strategies. Also Aussie yen as well. We talked about this yesterday on Twitter. These are sort of the two classic uh, risk-off vehicles. Selling high ones in Aussie Yen, if you look on the hourlies, you see we were screwing around above the figure. We went down to 75, back to 06. Um, last night we traded down to 43. And here we are at 71. I'm okay to sell this Aussie Yen here at the open between 70 and 90 now. Um, I do think this is going to continue on the downside. I'm not looking for massive risk off and Euro Yen is my preferred vehicle. Um, but Aussie Yen looks like it can still head lower. Although just saying that out loud 
uh, Euro Yen is, is, is my horse. We're square Aussie Yen, um, and we're going to be focusing on Euro Yen today. What else can we look at? Let's look at our friend the uh, Dollar Czar. This, uh, as we talked about yesterday, was going to be choppy. Uh, we talked about a sort of 53, 65 range. We kind of got exactly that. We never really got back down um, to 53 uh, in the European time. Of course, we had some bids down there. I know that for a fact. Uh, this thing has some more upside. The market's short this. Uh, this was a consensus trade for the beginning of the year. The flock is on this. It didn't make no sense to really, uh, to me. Um, the economy's in tatters still. 30% unemployment. We could go on and on and on. I don't want to besmirch um, the South African situation. Uh, but suffice it to say, I, it looks horrible to me still. Um, and you combine that with, you know, drought problems, and it's just a cacophony of, of crap. Um, I wish it wasn't, but it is, and so anytime this thing appreciates a fair bit, we, we try and get on the short side. So this is where we still remain on the short side today. We're a little bit more cautious on this today, so I don't think this is going to scream higher. Um... As we approach this 200 day, there will be some natural resistance. All of the stops from the guys who have this from the beginning of the year will be above 14. So as we get closer to that, and that comes into the radar, we'll, um, we'll make that more of a focus. We're casually core long uh, dollar rand. Same thing though. We're, we're, it's a wild horse here, so you know you're thinking about a 13.55. 68 range uh, with multiple trades on both sides and uh, difficult difficult to hold on difficult to ride this horse but uh, she's going north uh, dollar rand what else is out there gold we kind of missed that uh, basically euro yen and euro dollar are our focus um, keeping an eye on boons. This is sort of the canary in the coal mine. If you wanted to sell BTPs, um, well, you're late to the party. Uh, don't bother doing that today. But um, Euro Yen and Euro Dollar left hand side. We'll take a closer look at the Canadian stuff as we get closer to that 2.30 Swiss time. Uh, we got some key numbers there. And the Canadian banks that I talked to are all pretty sanguine uh, on the Canadian situation and, and if um, if this turns negative uh, I think there'll be a, a good run on the Canadian dollar anyway again more on that we have to see how stretched we are on the top side so uh, tune into Twitter for some news on CAD good luck uh, with Euro and Euro Yen uh, this morning or whatever you're doing I hope you make lots of money I will see you guys tomorrow. Ciao.